Hi, this is Jordan Berlin. Um, I am uh, here to introduce the debate uh, that is happening next, which is a debate as to how to approach the patient with resectable pancreatic cancer. Um, I will be taking the side of total neoadjuvant therapy prior to resecting the pancreatic cancer. And the guy who supports uh, um, uh, doing that approach the most, Dr. Matthew Katz, the director of pancreatic surgery at uh, MD Anderson Cancer Center, will be taking the approach of uh, doing surgery first. Uh, so first, my disclosures, um, which are the same disclosures I've shown before. And uh, I, will, I will note that as opposed to last night's debate, this is a side I truly believe in. Um, surgery is our only curative therapy. Let's not make any mistakes about that. It is the only curative therapy we have for pancreatic cancer at the current time. However, five-year survival rates for surgery alone remain very dismal at about 10% the last time we really looked at it because it has been a while. Uh, this more than doubles with adjuvant chemotherapy in the current era uh, with uh, Fulfirinox uh, data, and I'm sure we'll both show some of that uh, later. Uh, practice does matter though. Uh, retrospective data shows that experienced surgeons and experienced hospitals have the best outcomes uh, in pancreatic cancer. And um, it does say that uh, we should be taking care uh, as to who does the surgeries because in fact, if that randomized data showed these, uh, the same effects as we see with the retrospective data, we would uh, FDA approve the surgeons. Uh, because surgeries are only curative option, our goal is twofold, get patients to surgery, but don't take people to surgery who won't benefit from it because it is still a tough surgery. And pancreatic cancer, as I said, is a systemic disease upon presentation. I mean, if, if only 10% survive, uh, then 90% actually have metastatic disease at the time of resection, hiding in micrometastatic form. <clears throat> Our response rates are about 30% for both Fulfirinox and Gemnap Aclitaxel when investigator assessed. Um, and the goal of adjuvant and neoadjuvant therapy is to kill the micrometastatic disease, but your best option for kill is when it is small. And in a, study, um, in a study in Canada, when they looked at it, um, just to get uh, patients to adjuvant gemcitabine, and our standard is now a tougher regimen, so you have to have patients in better uh, shape. The truth is they only got 75% of the resected patients to adjuvant therapy. So with resection, we really also need to get them to the adjuvant therapy. I seem to have lost control. So does preoperative therapy impact operability? Well, meta-analysis looked at 11 studies, including 56 phase one, two trials, and found, uh, and, and a lot of them included radiation. Uh, the resection rate was 73.6%, and historically, uh, going straight to surgery, it can range from anywhere from 78 to 96%, I think, depending on your uh, criteria for deciding who goes to surgery. Uh, median overall survival was 23.3 months, uh, this was prior to the uh, modern regimens. This is an older uh, trial. The, uh, it was published in 2010. So nobody got gemcitabine, napaclitaxel, or uh, fulfirinox. And we don't, it shows that we don't impact resectability necessarily, even with weaker chemo. That's what I got out of it. The second meta-analysis, uh, again, not necessarily randomized trials, patients receiving upfront surgery or neoadjuvant therapy for resectable or borderline pancreatic cancer, um, the overall survival by intention treat was 18.8 months versus 14.8 months um, uh, favoring the neoadjuvant therapy. And in patients who actually res uh, achieved resection rather than the intent to treat, the difference was much greater. Resectability was lower for the neoadjuvant therapy, but R0 resection, our true goal, uh, was actually much higher. And uh, the pathologic uh, lymph node rate was much lower for patients who received neoadjuvant therapy. A third meta-analysis, because nobody can do enough meta-analyses in the world, uh, of six randomized trial neoadjuvant therapy versus surgery. First, 815, 850 patients, 411 received neoadjuvant therapy. Overall survival was improved with a hazard ratio of 0.73, and the median overall survival was better as seen below. Resection rate was similar. Once again, our zero rate was improved significantly with a uh, relative risk of 1.5 and lymphonegativity rate was also improved even better than on the prior uh, meta-analysis. Overall improved outcomes for neoadjuvant therapy prior to the modern chemotherapy regimens. This does not include a lot of this data from uh, modern chemotherapy regimens. So do we have any more recent data? Well, the Preopank study 
uh, was a randomized phase three study. And in this case, uh, patients either went from surgery to gemcitabine or gemcitabine, gemcitabine radiation surgery, and gemcitabine afterwards. And the disease-free survival was improved with, uh, with radiochemotherapy followed by exploratory laparotomy over surgery alone. And overall survival was also improved, though the p-value was not statistically significant. Many of us would argue whether five, as I mentioned last night, five or 10% is really uh, that much different when you're talking about your p-values. Nonetheless, it was not a definitive study. Um, there was also a trial in, uh, in Japan of S1 and gemcitabine neoadjuvant therapy versus upfront surgery. And the overall survival was again, statistically significantly longer for the neoadjuvant arm. Resection rate, R0 rate, and preoperative uh, morbidity were not significantly different from this. So overall, I think we have a, um, a great body of data that suggests neoadjuvant therapy improves our surgical outcomes. Um, this is a trial of uh, two different regimens in neoadjuvant uh, uh, therapy, modified fulfirinox versus gemcitabine and abacotaxel. And it's a small study, a randomized phase two study. Um, these are the arms. And of course, this is peri, uh, perioperative rather than a total neoadjuvant approach that I'm arguing for. But nonetheless, you can see that the toxicities are actually uh, fairly manageable uh, and not significantly high in both the preoperative and the postoperative setting. However, I will note that a lot of patients, if you look at uh, postoperative uh, therapy with almost half of the patients uh, being uh, listed as uh, in the postoperative group compared to the preoperative group. Thus, one of the arguments for giving all the therapy up front. Uh, once again, our zero resection rate was good. Disease-free survival after resection uh, was, uh, was uh, fairly good. Um, and overall survival was uh, about the same for the two arms. One would argue that these overall survivals are not much different from uh, that than we see for gemcitabine alone as adjuvant therapy. But I'll note that this is a much different selection of patients. I'll talk a little bit more about it. Just so you know, this is the argument that everybody's going to use against me, the Fulfirinox data. Modified Fulfirinox versus gemcitabine, a randomized trial for patients who had an R0 or R1 resected pancreatic cancer. And this was the disease-free survival. I have to admit, it looks great. Uh, median disease-free survival of 21.6 months versus 12.8. Actually, that disease-free survival is a little bit better than we're used to seeing, but um, overall, um, overall spectacular, but even more so, the overall survival is really great. Even the overall survival for gemcitabine is the best we've ever seen. Probably reflects that we also have good therapies upon recurrence with fulfirinox and gemcitabine and napac with axel. And a 54.4 months with uh, modified fulfirinox is, is a very exciting uh, for us to see in this era. Of course, we still want to do better. However, patients on a neoadjuvant study were both patients who had good and poor outcomes after surgery. Recall that only 75% of Canadian patients were able to receive postoperative gemcitabine. And as I pointed out on the um, perioperative study, only 50% or approximately 50% got their postoperative therapy. So you are selecting a best group when you're looking at the postoperative regimen that may have a better prognosis than the patients who we select prior to surgery because there's a lot of things that they find at the time of surgery. And of course, um, we, are, we are not selecting for that group of patients who are the um, Marines who make it through uh, to postoperative adjuvant therapy. Patients on a post-op study all had resection. Like I said, only 70% of the patients on the Alliance trial had resection. Only 55% of the patients were healthy enough to receive post-op therapy, as I mentioned. Therefore, it's impossible to compare the Alliance population to those on the post-op adjuvant Fulfirinox trial. So in conclusion, Fulfirinox is now our standard adjuvant therapy for healthy patients. I'll give it to you if they have resection first. Post-op fulfirinox is proven. However, preoperative fulfirinox and gemcitabine napac with tax are both safe, both effective. And while some patients progressed unresectable, those patients are felt unlikely to ever benefit from surgery and they're a small group. The overall survival of two years does not look as good as post-op fulfirinox, but again, very different populations. I would argue that the reason to do the total new adjuvant therapy for um, for this situation is again, you don't get a lot of the therapy in post-operative and the idea is to eliminate the micrometastatic disease. In the long run, the disease will be resected from the pancreas. They're not going to die 
of that particular uh, ab, uh, that particular uh, disease. They're going to die of the metastases. So getting it while it's small, you need to do the uh, the approach where you treat them all up front. So I thank you, and I'm going to turn it over now to my colleague, Dr. Matt Katz, um, who will argue for surgery up front.